IMAX CEO Richard Gelfand joins us exclusively to talk about the quarter and more. Rich, great to see you this morning. Great to see you too, Carl. Uh, revenue up 51. Uh, that's pretty big. How much of that was Oppenheimer? Um, well, it, Oppenheimer certainly helped the quarter. Um, we're over $180 million of that. But a lot of things happen. You know, I, I know there's a lot of issues in China, but we had a very big summer box office uh, there, a film called Creation of the Gods, did over $30 million. Um, we've had a very diversified content slate recently, as you know, Taylor Swift. You guys have talked about that a lot. From <laughs> Apple, uh, Killers of the Flower Moon, um, did very well this past weekend. You know, we're firing on all cylinders, Carl. It's not, it, it's not just Oppenheimer. It's a lot of things. I know you were asked about um, the movement in the 24 slate uh, just this week, MI8 getting pushed back. Uh, your argument is that it sort of opens windows for other things. Is that right? Yeah, well, it, it turns out one lucky thing for us is that Dune 2 uh, moved out of November. And what that enabled us to do was to play the Marvels and to play Hunger Games and to play Napoleon from Apple a little bit longer because we could only play one movie at a time. As a result, Dune 2 now is an anchor for our 2024 slate. It comes out in March. So it, it actually opened opportunities. We're, again, since we only show one movie at a time, we're not an exhibitor, so we don't need to fill a 20-plex. And there's, it, there's just lots of opportunities out there. Rich, it's David. What about those who do need to fill? Uh, I don't even know if they have 20 plexes anymore, but who need to fill these? I mean, what is your just sense as somebody who knows the industry well in terms of that vacuum and how big it's going to get before this actor strike gets resolved? So, David, it all depends on when it gets resolved. So if it, the first half of the year, um, there's a lot of content that's pretty much locked. It's the second half, things that need to be reshot, and obviously you need the actors for promotion. So I think if it settles in the next month or so, um, it'll be okay. Um, there'll be a little bit of a negative uh, fill for exhibitors. But I think if it dra drags on till the beginning of the year, then it's a more serious issue for them. Uh, again, for us, most of our year is locked because we play one blockbuster at a time. It's not that I still care about it. And I do think it's likely to settle in the, you know, in the nearer term rather than the longer term. But I think the exhibitors have an issue if it drags on. Well, in the meantime, you've got, you've got Taylor Swift, and, and you mentioned what a bonanza that has been. Is this a new model, the concert films, or is this something that only she can do? Um, a little bit of both. I think um, we're doing Beyonce also, which is coming in early December. But I think there are a few global artists that can really with limited marketing and afford to film it themselves, you know, pull off that kind of a, 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 a global event. I think, um, however, it, oh, it does open the door to a lot of what I'd call local events. So I, there's big music stars in South America. You can do an event there. There's big music stars in Europe. We did an event in France with Indochine about a year ago, and it was enormously successful. So I think the model works, but probably not on the global scale that Taylor Swift did.